So I figured I'd make a uh, slightly different tutorial. This one is how to set up a render server for like a render farm setup as well as working with distributed rendering. So the first thing you're going to want to do is download and install Backburner. If you're using 3 Studio Max, you don't want to pay for something like Deadline or other um, uh, render queue managers. So Backburner is free. You just got to sign up to Autodesk and you're good to go. It's a very simple setup. Just click through the uh, next, 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 and you're done. So what you're going to want to do is, like the way I have it set up on mine is I went out and I bought just a cheap four or $500 computer. And the whole purpose of this one is to host the Backburner Manager. Because when you install Backburner, there's three things that come, come with it. And let me see if I could uh, open up this folder right here. So here we go, Autodesk Backburner. There's a manager. This is the thing that actually hosts your uh, server, so your computers can connect to it. There's a monitor. Uh, this is to look at the jobs on the uh, <coughs> the back burner. And then there's the server, which you want to launch on every computer that you want to use as a render node. So on this computer that I have, my file server, the whole focus of this system is to just host the server and also have other things <coughs> like uh, hold on one second. I have all my uh, files for CAD data and things like that. So when you launch Backburner for the first time, there's going to be settings that come up that kind of look like this. I leave everything at default, but the trick is to know which uh, computer you're actually launching it on. So f again, for me, this system's name is File Server. So now when I move this aside, close that out. So let's say you are working on your project and you're ready to send it to the farm. So in 3D Studio Max, all you have to do is click this little button right here. Where is it? Here we go. So for the target, see where it says production render mode? You click submit to network rendering. And then this little guy will come up. And because I'm using V-Ray, typically I'm saving out through the V-Ray settings. So this means nothing to me. I just click yes. So then this type of window comes up. So this is the job name, and then this is the inter-manager name or IP address. Uh, you could do automatic search. I found it best and most consistent if you just put in the IP or the name. So for me, it's file server. You're going to click connect, and it connects to your server. It shows all the render nodes that you have. If they're online, they're green. If they're offline, they're gray. So currently, all my nodes are offline. And then once you have that, you click submit. And then there's other things you can do as well. There's like uh, split scan lines. There's different ways where it'll break up the render in like strips. So if let's say you're rendering a really big image and you don't want to use one computer, you could do it like that. So you could look at these online and figure out what you want to play with. But typically, this is this is the foundation of submitting something to the farm. Now, there are a few very important things to know. You may have to make sure every map you have is linked through a network path. So for example, what you want to do is have any computer you want. Now I've seen people map things like this. Like I have these uh, these drives mapped. While this could work, the most consistent and easiest thing I've ever had is where you typically just have a network direction. So all you have to do is have two backslashes, a typical network URL, and then that's it. And then that is a great foundation for consistent results. Because if you map something to, let's say, C drive, where you're locally, you're going to have an actual issue with textures not showing up during the rendering process. And that goes the same for distributed rendering. So if you're a V-Ray user and you want to actually use the V-Ray distributed rendering settings there in setup, all you have to do is go to the settings tab. And then uh, right here where it says distributed rendering, you turn this on and you click on the settings and you go in and you type in the name of every single render node you want to add as a distributed rendering node so for me all my servers that I use uh, on the back burner queue I also add a uh, distributed rendering thing and so once you add those to the list <coughs> it's very important when you launch a computer for a render node you just go to the V-Ray stuff so I'm gonna go down all the way to V-Ray so V-Ray 7 for me. And then you want to launch this thing that says launch V-Ray DR spawner. And once you click that, 
then that system is going to register as a distributed rendering node. And all you have to do then is just make sure all the nodes are added to this list. And when you hit render, you're going to have all the machines synced up and working together on creating one image. But again, it's very important. You have to make sure all your maps are linked through the network path. Because if you have things local, like C drive, D drive, they will show up as black empty squares and you will not have a successful render. So again, this is not a exciting tutorial. This is just kind of like informative thing on setting up a render farm or distributed rendering servers. It's a very simple process, but there's some of these rules with the network paths that are key because if you don't do them, you will actually have failed renders. So hope this helps. Again, not really anything crazy here, but I don't really recall many videos on how to actually set up this stuff. Even though it's simple, there's not a lot of information out there on this topic, if I remember correctly, but it's been a long time since I researched it.